Join me today for a deep dive into triads and how best to organize them, practice them, and most importantly, use them. Major, minor, diminished, and augmented will immediately apply them all to a handful of different progressions. From dark, deep, and ambient Americana-style triads on the bottom string set, to choppy, soulful Hendrix-style riffs over Hey Joe. It's crucial to put these things to work right out of the gate if you really want them to stick. And with these exercises and my exhaustive lesson materials, you'll have a lifelong reference guide to revisit time and time again. So whether you're looking to improve your ability to play over chord changes, or just need to brush up on your fretboard fluency, this is the lesson for you. So grab your guitar, make yourself comfortable, and join me for the next 20 minutes or so. So first of all, we're going to map out all of our triads across all of our string sets, and I'm going to show you some really good ways to organize these. Once that's sorted, we're going to look at applying them to some exercises, both lead-based and chord-based. Hopefully this will be a good way of really getting to know where these points are and getting you on your way to improvising over some changes. So we'll start off on string set one with the C major triad in root position. First, third, fifth. Now we're going to invert that triad along the same string set and we're going to get this. Third, fifth, root. Then we invert it again and we get the fifth, the root and the third. Okay, now let's go back to the first shape again. And now to find our next string set, we can simply think about moving the top note down an octave. So this G note is going to come down from the third fret of the top E string down to the fifth fret of the D string. And now you've got these three notes. That's the fifth, the root, and the third. Now we're going to invert that along the same string set. Root, third, fifth. And then invert it again. Third, fifth, root. Again, let's return back to where we started there. And we're going to move that top note down one octave to the seventh fret of the A string. So this would be string set number three. Third, fifth, root. Invert that. Fifth, root, third. Invert it again. Root, third, fifth. Let's go back to where we started. And again, take the top note down one octave onto the eighth fret of the low E string to get our final string set. Root, third, fifth. Invert that, third, fifth, root, invert that, fifth, root, third. The materials that accompany this one are truly vast, not only containing my triad survival guide, but also every single example in progression neatly typed up in tab and notation, in Guitar Pro and PDF formats. I've also included my backing track for the low triads Americana style exercise, so this is truly a lifetime's worth of reference materials for no more than the cost of a cup of coffee. Check the links in the description if you want to get hold of it all. Now before we take that any further, let me show you some exercises that you can apply to this and anything that you learn that really helps to get these things drilled and in the muscle memory and under the fingers comfortably. I'm going to set the metronome to 60 beats per minute and I'm going to run up and down these triads on their string sets as if it's a scale and I'm going to try and change on every beat. One, two, three, four. As a quick side note, I moved that last shape on the lowest string set down an octave. Sounds really nice down there. Nice and hefty. Okay, so that's one method of organization, putting them in horizontal linear lines along their string sets. But something that I think is really valuable is something that I refer to as stacks. So stacking these triads vertically instead of horizontally. So let's take this as a starting point, root position on string set one. We can then stay within the shape and go to the second inversion on string set two, and then we go to the first inversion on string set three, and then we're back to the root position on string set four. So that's one stack. And notice how they all have some kind of overlap. I also think it's beneficial to think about how that stuff sits within the caged system as well. It's like we're starting in the A shape and transitioning across to the G shape. Okay, so our second stack is going to start here with the first inversion C major triad on string set one. There's the next shape, there's the next, and there's the last. Notice how we've got some nice symmetry here as well. We're always starting and finishing on the same inversion. First inversion, root position. Second inversion, 
first inversion again, just like down here where we had the root position. Second inversion, first inversion, root position again. Okay, now the final stack, starting on second inversion. Or we could do it down in open position. Now those are just our major triads, of course, and there are four types of triads. You have major, minor, diminished, and augmented. But now think about how much more simple it becomes to find those if you know where your major triads are as a starting point. If you know it really thoroughly, you'll know where all your roots, your thirds, and your fifths are, and it's quite easy to adapt something, for example, flattening a third to make it a minor triad each time. You know, if I'm really confident with my majors, and I know where the third is, I can just say, hey, let's flatten that third to make it minor, and reflect that same change on every string set. What about the diminished? That would be similar to the minor, the root, the flat three, but a flattened fifth also. So we're taking the minor and adapting it, flattening the five. Take the minor and adapt it, flatten the five. Take the minor and adapt it, flatten the five. Take the minor and adapt it, flatten the five. Do that in all of your positions. Again, minor, find the fifth and flatten it. 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 Final stack, again starting on a minor, thinking where's the fifth? It's on the G string this time, so that's the string we flatten to make it diminished. Minor becomes diminished. Minor becomes diminished. Minor becomes diminished. You can use a similar thing to find your augmented triads. Take a major as your starting point. A major is one, three, five, of course. Augmented is one, three, sharp, five. So as long as you know where your five is, very easy to adapt that. And then, again, reflect that throughout the rest of your stack. Do it in your other two positions as well. And there you have it. That's all of your triads mapped out across the fretboard. Run all of those through the exercise that I mentioned, you know, metronome at 60 BPM, changing on every beat of the bar. Get creative with it. Go up and down horizontally through the string sets or go up and down vertically in your stacks. It's a really good thing to work on. Now the next thing you want to do is apply that to a cycle of fourths so that you're actually changing your key each time as well. Let's take major triads to start with. Again, the more you know your major triads, the easier it gets to find all your other ones. So it is worth starting with those and really mastering them. So let's start with our C major triad on string set one. Now we're thinking, what's a fourth above that? F. So we're going to find the nearest F major triad. There's one. Now what's a fourth above that? B flat. Find the nearest option. Fourth above that, E flat. Fourth above that, A flat. Fourth above that, D flat. G flat. B. E. A. D, G, back home to C, where you started, one octave higher. That would be a full cycle of fourths through all 12 keys. Then do the same thing, starting on the next inversion. So the first inversion is C, the nearest F, nearest B flat, nearest E flat, nearest A flat, nearest D flat, G flat, B. At this point, it's up to you whether you want to keep climbing uh, or go down an octave. I'm going to go down an octave. Mostly just because the intonation is a little bit iffy on this guitar at the moment. Uh, so there's your B, then the nearest E, then A, then D, then G, and then back to where you started, C. Okay, then the final inversion, starting on the second inversion, C. Um, again, I might start down here this time, just to keep it fresh, starting in the open position. C major, the nearest F. Nearest B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, A, D, G, C. One octave above where you began. Now, of course, you want to do that across all of your string sets uh, and just chip away at it gradually. It doesn't have to be done overnight. You want to keep working on these things on a daily basis. Little and often, as they always say, is the way forward on this stuff. Because there's a lot to take in. Because then you want to repeat the same process with your minor triads, 
and then your diminished triads and your augmented triads too. For now, we'll ignore spread triads, mostly because we're thinking about playing lead here. We don't really need to look at those right now, but in future, it's worth tackling. Now let's apply these triads to a chord progression. This is another really good exercise. I used to just open songbooks and, you know, for example, a Beatles songbook and pick a song out, say Nowhere Man or something, and play all the way through the song, just matching the chords with the appropriate triad each time and try and get all your string sets involved along the way. So you could pick any chord progression, but we're going to start with a really common one, a 1-6, 4 minor, 5. Think about Sleepwalk and songs like that. <laughs> So the best course of action here is to have the progression written out clearly in front of you. C, A minor, F minor, G, and get a metronome going at 60 BPM again. So let's use our stacks this time. We'll try and stay within stacks and move through the three zones. Uh, we'll start here on the first string set, root position C major triad. Nearest A minor, nearest F minor, nearest G. Next C major shape, A minor, F minor, G, next C. Then the bottom strings. Zone two. Now, if we want to get fancy, every time we get to our 5 chord, we can imply G7 rather than just G major. And we can do that by grabbing a diminished triad off the 3rd, the 5th, or the flat 7. So that would be a B diminished, a D diminished, or an F diminished, which if you know you're diminished, you'll realize they're all the same thing anyway. Okay, here's an example of that. 60 BPM. 1, 2, 3, 4. Same thing in zone two, two, three, four. Finally, zone three, three, four.
So that exercise included three of our four types of triads. The only thing we're missing there is the augmented. So to bring in the augmented, check this out. This is something that blew my mind when I learned about it. If you take a C major and you're going to go to F, so basically you're going to be moving in fourths, you can play C augmented as a passing chord before you get to the F. So you can go C, C augmented. So that's just sharpening the fifth. That voice leads into the F beautifully. So let's say you want to continue through the cycle of fourths and go to B flat next. Grab the F augmented along the way. Then the B flat augmented takes you to E flat. E flat augmented takes you to A flat. A flat augmented takes you to D flat. D flat augmented takes you to G flat. G flat augmented takes you to B. B augmented takes you to E. E augmented takes you to A. A augmented onto the D. D augmented G. G augmented back home to C. Sounds really pretty. Now again, practice that on all of your string sets. Now a really good progression to work on that incorporates all four types of triads would be something like a simple country blues in the key of C. So we can go C, C augmented taking you to the F, F minor bringing you back home to the 1, then the G, G7, C. The G7 again we're using that B diminished triad. Let's try that in the next position. C, C augmented, F, F minor, C, G, G7, C. Again, rinse and repeat through all of your other positions and your string sets. Now another study that I've put together for you to work on is what I'm calling Low Triads Americana Style. This is quite a simple progression, but again, it can sound really beautiful with the help of some low string set triads. These things are brilliant for rhythm playing and for lead, but really useful as a rhythm player. I find myself using these things maybe 70% of the time when I'm playing live, if I'm not soloing at least. So let's outline this common progression in the key of C. We'll go from the one, a few times. So I'm going to play through the study first of all, nice and slow, metronome set to 85 BPM. One, two, three, four. Now for that one, I'm also including a backing track for you. Now of course, most of this lesson has been focused on just mapping out these triads so that they're really dependable. But let's just finish on a little bit of a teaser for what's to come. Now let's think about making a simple phrase out of some of these ingredients. So we're gonna start on a C major chord. And we're thinking about our root position triad on string set one. We're gonna isolate the top two strings. And we're gonna play them together as a double stop, but we're also gonna hammer on from a whole turn below on the B string. Now, although we've added a new note there, that's what you call a neighboring tone. That's a note that would be in the parent scale of the triad. So in this case, that's a D note, and that would be part of your C major scale. And then we're gonna come down and land on the root. Really important and common piece of vocabulary for any guitar player in any style. Now, let's say the chord goes to G next. One option, of course, is just to carry that whole lick up to the 10th fret where it's now part of your G major triad. But there is another option. We can stay down here and reuse this because these two notes on top are common to the G major triad as well. 
This time, this is one of our neighboring tones, this E note. And the C note, it's like a sus4, if we're thinking G major with a sus4. We can then resolve that to the third of G. So again, we're at landing on this outline of a G major triad in first inversion. So now you've got something like this. Three, four. There's the C. G. I'd highly recommend getting hold of a looper if you don't have one. All I did there was put down the chord progression C to G. Let it loop round and round. Now I'm going to take that same idea and move it to the other string sets. With the looper. Now let's break that into fragments and apply it to a different chord progression. Let's try the progression for Hey Joe by Jimi Hendrix. C, G, up a whole tone, D, A, E. Now with the looper. just followed the changes using our triads and making that simple little phrase out of them. Sounded awesome, right? That's such an important part of your rhythm playing, never mind your lead playing, having those little chops and fills between chords. I think we managed to squeeze quite a lot in there. I hope it's not too overwhelming. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll get right back to you. Take care.